Good evening, everyone. Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live, and uh, we are getting reports already in that the Russian-Ukrainian conflict has begun, and uh, I have not been able to confirm this independently uh, as far as from Washington as of yet. I do know that the embassy in Washington has been evacuated, and from what I understand, uh, uh, and of course the guy that's doing the video is a soldier. You can see him holding an AK-47. You see the tip of the barrel popping out a little bit. Uh, but it's also, from what we're seeing early reports of, is that uh, Russia has already destroyed the naval base uh, or the Navy, uh, the Ukrainian Navy already, from what we're hearing as well. Um, so we're at, we'll have to wait to see. It says the, U the Russian Navy is conducting large-scale amphibious operations on the, uh, on the Azov coast from Odessa to Maripol. The Ukrainian fleet uh, was almost destroyed as a result of the preventative strikes, according to U.S. media. Uh, that's what's been reported thus far there. Uh, we don't know everything as of yet. Uh, that's just, I was trying to look this up as far as the Navy on Ukraine. Uh, we have heard that there's been a lot of explosions in Kiev as well. Uh, so again, everything is still kind of premature at this point. We don't know for sure what all is going on as of yet. And, uh, but we will try to find out as much as we possibly can. Um, of course, uh, let's see here. Let's listen to what the president is saying. Full blocking sanctions on two large Russian financial institutions, VEB and their military bank. We're implementing comprehensive sanctions on Russian sovereign debt. That means we've cut off Russia's government from Western financing. It can no longer raise money from the West and cannot trade in its new debt on our markets or European markets either. Starting tomorrow and continuing in the days ahead, will also impose sanctions on Russia's elites and their family members. They share in the corrupt gains of the Kremlin policies and should share in the pain as well. Because of Russia's actions, we have worked with Germany to ensure Nord Stream 2 will not, as I promised, will not move forward. There it is. There it is right there. The smoking gun. They stop the Nord Stream 2 pipeline. The corrupt Biden family as we've been mentioning already, Hunter Biden and his father, Joe Biden, uh, is the most corrupt presidency we've seen thus far. And this is exactly what we knew was coming. Uh, so they're going to put pressure on Germany. And you have to remember, Germany really is still uh, under the War Powers Act there. So Germany is going to have to comply, or as I've been told, Germany may leave NATO altogether because Germany will not side with NATO when it comes to the issue with Russia. So it's, it's really going to we'll have to see how this is going to pan out in the end here. But uh, just going to have to see exactly how far Russia will go with this. Now, keep in mind, we've already told you what's happening on our own border here right now. There is a major plan, major plan of um, China backing Russia to invade the United States. Now, Russia will not do the actual invasion of the United States, but the troops are already in place. This is why they want these trucker things moving on is because it helps to implement martial law. Canada's already implemented martial law. What are they going to do? They're going to put these Chinese troops in place to get ready to come into this country as well. Russia, already with the Poseidon drones on our coastline, moving around nuclear weapons, etc., um, and I, I was told that this could happen as early as this, where we're at right now, but they, they really felt like, the generals felt like it would not happen until this next winter. So Russia has really caught everybody by surprise over this Ukraine deal, and it, and it has everything to do, not so much with Ukraine. It's all about this Nord Stream 2 pipeline. And the president couldn't have said it any better when he made that final little statement there. Uh, this is Kiev and Russia there, exploding bombs and everything. Gee, Manetti. Wow. So, very, very serious way. But not sure what they blew up there.
So they're all speaking English. Russia is definitely not playing around, friends, not playing around on this this issue at all. Um, Thank you for joining uh, us tonight uh, via telephone. Uh, you're watching this unfold. Your reaction to Putin's threat if uh, any Western nation or any nation intervenes with this Russian military action. Well, this is something that should have never happened. This would not have happened during my administration. In fact, some people were saying, why didn't this take place? take place uh, over the last four years during our administration, and it didn't for a very good reason, and I'll explain that to you someday, but it wouldn't have taken place, and it wouldn't have taken place right now, and it's a very sad thing for the world, for the country, and it's certainly very sad for a lot of people that are going to be needlessly killed. Remember, well, uh, uh, President us, Trump sense, met though. with I mean, you, you know, some of the Trump generals just recently. Uh, how would you have avoided this conflict. How, he had a better how relationship with Putin than what Biden does. Let's face the facts. Well, look, I do know him, and I know him very well. We've had many, many uh, times together. I got along with him fantastically, despite the fact that I shut down Nord Stream 2. Nobody would have heard of Nord Stream 2 if it weren't for me. I'm the one that shut it down, and I'm the one that told uh, Angela, you're doing a terrible thing by doing this. And they were going to get 75%, not 30%, 75% of their energy from Nord Stream 2. It was ridiculous. If you remember, I told you this uh, privately once. I sent them a white flag, a flag of surrender. I gave it to, she said, what does this mean? I said, that means you'll surrender as far as Russia is concerned. They've had a lot of conflicts over the centuries. So I think that it's a, it's a terrible thing. Uh, the way it started, I really don't believe you wanted to do this initially. I think he wanted to do something and negotiate, and it just got worse and worse, and then he saw the weakness. And you know, it really started, I think, with the weakness in Afghanistan, the way they pulled out of Afghanistan. I really He's believe right that's there. where he started thinking, you know, he can do this, because when he saw President, how pathetic... Yeah, yeah. President Trump, I yeah. want to just ask... You know, that's kind of interesting when he saw the patheticness of Biden when it comes to Afghanistan, and he's right. He's right. Listen, I, 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 I go through these meetings. I know exactly what the, the deal is going on there. And this is, I've heard that over and over and over, that Biden is a very weak president and that he just, he allowed Afghanistan just to be pushed over and allowed our people to just be massacred over there. Uh, and then the whole issue with China and, and Taiwan, you can probably count Taiwan is probably fixing to go very, very soon. Biden is a weak president. Oh, he's pretty good as a, you know, you get that thug mentality going in there with the Biden uh, family there and getting all that money off that Nord Stream pipeline that doesn't pump, whatever doesn't pump, they get, a, they get a cut, Russia has to pay for it. Well, Russia's had enough. They've had enough and Putin is now making that known very, very well. So, um, and you know, there's one point they said that he would take it all the way to Kiev, so... Let's see what happens. I guess they're letting the people know they've had enough is enough. Let's listen a little bit more to former President Trump. I'll ask you this. We understand that Biden, um, President Biden is monitoring the situation at the White House now and is going to talk to the G7 tomorrow. Tomorrow? <laughs> and he's going to talk to the nation at some point tomorrow as well. Uh, your reaction to that approach? I don't think he's monitoring. I think he's probably sleeping right now. <laughs> this is a terrible thing. This is something that should have never happened. I really believe that it was Afghanistan when he looked at that horrible, weak pullout, one of the worst when the military gets pulled out first, when people, our soldiers are dying and horribly wounded. And, you know, when we leave $75, 85000000000 billion worth, billion dollars worth of equipment, you know, they're one of the biggest sellers of military equipment in the world right now. They're selling the equipment that we left at $85 billion. And we left hostages behind, a lot of hostages, more than President, anybody knew. I President, think when they saw that, Laura, I think that they said, maybe we can do this. President Trump, uh, the burgeoning friendship between President Xi and President Putin is of deep concern now, finally, I should say, to the State Department which described this as a potentially destructive force in the world. 
uh, gone, is, gone is the hope for some new world order where you know, everyone's going to get along if you have our two major adversaries now working in concert seemingly against the West. Did you, yeah. did you think that that was an important d to dynamic to disrupt when you were president, given... If you'll notice on the screen, Putin threat, you will have consequences that you've never had before in your history. That's if the West intervenes. I've already told you, China said that they'll do an invasion. They got their back. We would see some very devastating war come to this nation. And that still is right on. It's on the books, ready to go. What a obviously powerful alliance that could end up being. Well, I had a good relationship with both, but it was hurt by the Russia, Russia, Russia hoax, which was a total hoax. You see what happened with Durham and those reports and other reports, including Mueller. It was just a made-up hoax, and it really hurt our country. But despite the hoax, I had a good relationship, and I had a very good relationship with President Xi of China, other than he wasn't happy about the fact that I was tariffing and taxing the hell out of him, which somebody had to do finally after so many years. But I had a very good relationship. You know, as a young man growing up, I always heard that the worst thing that could happen is if you drive those two countries together. And it really started with Obama yep. there you go. and energy. He drove them together because one needed the energy and the other one needed the money. He drove them together and Biden put them. I kept them apart. And Biden, uh, now it, it looks like it's a, it's a great love fest. And that's a very bad thing it's a, for the fact. And I think you could probably add Iran into it, too, because you're including Iran also, Laura. It's a very bad thing what that happened. Yes, don't be surprised now if Iran doesn't go ahead and strike Israel because initially this whole war issue was going to start with Iran striking Israel, but now we see it's Russia has struck Ukraine. Uh, so we got a serious problem on our hands, friends. I don't know what's going to be next, but it's a very serious problem. Um, let's take a look at some of the footage here. Ukraine express fire started in Russia airstrike set off chain reaction at the Luhansk power plant. That's the Luhansk power plant there. Um, now they're saying that the Russian airstrikes did this to the Luhansk power plant, but uh, and, unless for some reason Russia wanted to do, uh, um, unless for some reason they're wanting to do something different, I, I don't know the answer. Russian paratroopers assaulting Kiev airport video just before Ukraine, Russia. So they're sending the Russians right on the ground. They are planning on full scale taking up. With it. All right, friends, this is your latest on it. I will uh, I will update you in the morning as well. Uh, good night at all this. Air raid sirens going off, trying to take out Russian planes that are flying overhead. Video of missile launch from Russia. Hmm. The nation is at war. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live at a time where peace will soon leave probably the entire planet. Good evening.